Hi, everyone. Join us for the next IoT show where we talk about Azure Sphere and Azure RTOS. Uh, and we'll have guest speaker Mike Hall from the Azure Sphere team joining us. So we're excited for you to uh, come watch with us. Hi everyone, welcome to the IoT show. Today we're going to be talking about Azure Sphere and Azure RTOS. So at Build, we made a big announcement that Azure RTOS is now GA, uh, and this is great, especially now developers can quickly build real-time capable software. And then Azure Sphere offers a secure platform for developers to build high-level applications and run real-time capable apps. So this sounds like a, a definitely like a power couple, uh, Azure Sphere and Azure Artos. But before we jump in, I want to introduce you to our guest speaker, Mike Hall uh, from the Azure Sphere team. Hey, Mike, how's it going? Good. How are you? Great, great. Well, I'm excited that you're here. Could you give a little bit of background of what you do at Microsoft? Yes, sure. So I'm a principal software engineering lead in the Azure Sphere team. And I, in particular, work on a team that is responsible for devices and demos, uh, which, which is exactly why I'm here today, uh, obviously, to show you a demo. Yes, I'm really excited. For those who don't know me, I am such a robotic fangirl, so I'm super excited to see this demo today. Uh, before we jump in, I think there's going to be a lot of questions about Azure RTOS and Azure Sphere, and why, you know, a little bit more information on why a developer would actually want to run Azure RTOS on an Azure Sphere. Okay, so uh, let's, uh, let's answer that. So um, when we think about Azure Sphere, uh, Azure Sphere, so I've got a development board uh, here. So this is one of the kind of standard Azure Sphere development boards. And the, the chip in the, in the middle there is the Azure Sphere chip. This is the MediaTek. Uh, MT3620. And so inside there, there are a number of different cores, one of which is an ARM A7, and there are also a couple of ARM M4 cores. So on the A7, a developer would write their software that can interface with hardware, but can also interface over the network to Azure services or other cloud services. So you can imagine somebody writing an application that runs on the A7 mm -hmm. that is both talking to hardware but also talking to cloud services. But for some of the types of applications that somebody would build for an embedded device, they have um, hard real-time constraints. Uh, yeah, they are deterministic. They need to be able to run um, uh, with, with hard timing constraints on the application that they write. And so in that case, typically, you would run that code on top of a real-time operating system, uh, such as Azure Artos. So in our case, for the demo that we've built here, uh, we have all of the real-time hardware interaction, deterministic code running on one of the M4s with Azure Artos, and then the non-deterministic code that is able to take telemetry from the M4 uh, yes, it's talking to a display on the front of the robot so you can see that it's connected and which app it's running is connected to Azure IoT Central in, in this case. Um, but that A7 app is also then connected to the internet and can send up telemetry and also retrieve commands back from Azure, as well as application updates that can update the A7 or M4 app running on the device. That makes sense. Uh, so we're we're been talking a lot about uh, real-time capabilities. But what is the real-time capabilities with Azure RTOS with Azure Sphere? Right. OK. So in this case, we have some uh, you know, fairly tight timing constraints for our robot, you know, which we'll, we'll get to see in, in a short while. Um, it's a two-wheeled robot, somewhat like a Segway, uh, so it needs to be able to balance. We, we have a, a fairly hard uh, or a hard timing constraint of a five millisecond runtime loop for all of the work that's happening, um, uh, you know, reading the uh, accelerometer, gyro, magnetometer, uh, doing the sensor fusion, uh, doing the PID control loop, um, uh, and then controlling the motors, uh, as well as 
uh, we've got a couple of, of uh, laser time of flight sensors on the system uh, mm -hmm. to look for obstacles in front and behind uh, the device. So some fairly hard real-time constraints on the M4 side of, of the house, and then on the A7 side, non-real-time telemetry command and control. Uh, so what is Azure Artos doing in, in our case? Well, we have a number of threads, Azure RTOS threads running in the system, one of which is, is doing all of the hardware interaction, one of which is responsible for communication uh, to the A7, to the non-real-time part of the system, as well as another thread that is lazily in the background kind of reading the time of flight sensors to look for obstacles in front and behind the system. That makes sense, especially comparing that this is going to be a you know, self-balancing robot, that demo. Uh, I imagine, of course, real-time capabilities is extremely important. Um, you know, with Azure Sphere, it's all about that secure platform. What is that level of security with Azure Sphere plus Azure Artos? Right. So when we think about security, um, there are obviously many examples that I'm sure both of us could quote around internet connected devices getting compromised. Yeah. Uh, so uh, what you really don't want to, to have is your robot or washing machine or, or cactus watering system <laughs> you <Yeah>. know, <laughs> hi hijacked and, and potentially being used as part of a denial of service uh, mm -hmm. you know, attack, right? So you want to ensure that uh, your system is secure and and Azure Sphere obviously has the best of class uh, security. Uh, there is a paper that talks about the seven properties of highly secure devices. Uh, you know, I'd encourage you to go read it. And Azure Sphere ticks all the boxes in terms of, of security. So what about uh, Azure Artos? Well, on the Azure Sphere system, I talked about having an A7 core and an M4 core or a couple of M4 cores on the system. There are a number of firewalls that exist in the system that when you're writing your application, you specify the types of, um, of interfaces that that application can use. And on the M4, that would be things like SPI and I2C and UART and GPIO and you know all the regular kind of hardware interfaces you would expect. But the M4 doesn't have any uh, direct access to the internet or to talk out to uh, you know outside services. Yeah. So there is a pipeline that exists between the M4 and the A7 for transfer of data up from the M4 telemetry and command and control from the A7 back down to the M4. The A7 in this case does have the ability to talk out to the internet, but also has security built in at that level as well. Uh, when I'm writing my application to talk to Azure services or some other systems, I will modify the application manifest for my application mm -hmm. to specify the endpoints that my application is allowed to talk to. So okay. there's no way for my application to talk to systems outside of that list um, on, the, on the system or, or even to talk to hardware connected to the device that is not part of that application manifest. That makes perfect sense. You know, and with these super secure devices, uh, running real-time apps. When, can you give a, a little bit more examples or scenarios on why this is a important option for developers? Yeah, so I think there are a couple of things here. Uh, the first of which is uh, when a developer is, is kind of building their system. You know, one, one thing for our robot, there's all this hardware interaction and, and there, are, there are kind of multiple sets of work happening here. Time of flight sensors, all of the accelerometer, gyro, motor control, as well as messaging and telemetry. So from that aspect, it's, it's super interesting for a developer to be able to build on top of something like Azure Artos as a real-time operating system that yeah. provides all of the support for uh, threading and mutexes and semaphores and, and you know, messaging between the threads as well as messaging between the M4 and the A7. So a developer can easily build on top of that by integrating in their, their code on top of that you know, highly uh, flexible, uh, highly deterministic uh, real-time operating system. So I think that's one aspect of it. The se second aspect of it is the security part that you mentioned, which is uh, you want to be able to build a, a secure, connected you know, internet device. I think many developers, when they're building their embedded system, uh, do think about security, but it's almost an afterthought as opposed to kind of thinking about the security up front. 
so with Azure Sphere, you kind of get that security built in. Uh, you know, we have the ability to update the operating system that runs on the A7. Uh, you as the developer have the ability to update the application code that runs on the A7 or the M4s. So you're in control of updating not only your application in terms of functionality updates, but also if you determine there's an issue within your code, you can fix it and push out an update to that uh, as well. I mean, that makes sense. And you, you brought up the point that, you know, security might not be initially the, the thoughts for some developers. Um, I would also add to that where, you know, security is hard. It's extremely hard. You know, it might be something that is thought of mind for folks, and then they have a tough deadline that they have to do um, and, and meet to. And, and there's so many different elements of security. So I'm glad that you brought up earlier for folks to check out that seven um, uh, properties of secure devices because it's a really great paper. Uh, and you were just talking about, you know, um, you know, being able to remotely uh, update your your device. Could you do to, you know, deep dive a little bit more into that for developers and what that experience would look like? Sure, of course. Um, so it's, it's very possible that you might want to update one of your applications, either because there's a functionality change or a new feature that you want to introduce, or potentially you found an issue with your code. Uh, you know, maybe there's a memory leak that, that you want to fix or whatever, right? So um, as, as a developer building on Azure Sphere, you have the ability to in effect, put your devices into different groups. You can think of these almost as kind of rings or, or you know, deployment stages. Uh, so you can have a, you know, an internal test environment and your production environment, for example. That gives you the ability to uh, write your applications, test your applications locally by deploying your applications from Visual Studio or Visual Studio code uh, to your device and test it out. Uh, and obviously then when ready, you can package your application updates and push them into your test environment, make sure everything works there, and then kind of push from there out into your production environment as well. That makes that makes a lot of sense. Uh, I am really wanting to see this demo. <laughs> so okay. Do you want to jump in there uh, and talk about, you know, uh, what were your goals with building this and uh, just kind of what you used to build the self-balancing uh, robot? Sure, uh, of course. Um, so there are a couple of ways that we could do that. Either I've got a video that we can show that uh, explains it, or uh, we can switch to the camera and you can see the, the robot doing its live thing. Which would you prefer? Let's, let's look at the video and then I definitely want to see it in uh, real time. Okay, perfect. All right, so this is the, the robot. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, running Azure Sphere inside the robot. The case that you see on the top there is the battery compartment. So it's it's got three AA batteries in there. So okay. it's somewhat top heavy, right? Um, as you can see, it's it's balancing quite happily. It's it's kind of doing its thing. Um, you asked the question about you know, some of the, the reasons for building out this demo. Uh, I think there are a few. The first of which is just to show that Azure Sphere uh, and Azure Artos combined give you the ability to build out devices that are not only internet connected, mm -hmm. but also have that kind of hard real time capability that many applications that people build need, right? So it's a combination of hard real time from the Azure Artos side, as well as the connectivity command and control from the Azure Sphere side. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so let's talk about some of the hardware decisions that we made to build out this device. So this is an internal view um, of the board. So we, we've built a custom board uh, to sit inside the robot that has all the appropriate components on it. It's 60 millimeters by 27 millimeters, so it's, it's pretty small. Um, you know, it has the battery connector. We've seen the battery compartment on top of the robot. Mm -hmm. It's got status LEDs either side on, on the front. Micro USB, so we can connect to our uh, you know de desktop or laptop PC and and deploy new code from Visual Studio and debug it and test it and and do all these kind of good things. Uh, it's got the motor driver, the motor controller at the bottom. Time of flight sensors. This is one of the lasers uh, forward facing on the robot, and there's another one on the back that we'll see in a second. The IMU, so this is the accelerometer, gyro, and magnetometer. Mm -hmm. um, the display, which is 32 pixels by 128 pixels, kind of small. Um, and then on the back, 
Uh, here's the Azure Sphere module. This is the Avnet um, uh, module, which is running the Azure Sphere MT3620 chip. Uh, so yeah, there's the Avnet module. Uh, two motor interfaces, so the motors kind of plug into the sockets on the bottom, the rear time of flight sensor, and a power switch so that we can turn it on. Uh, any, any, any kind of questions there? No, I think that's just really straightforward. I'm, I'm interested now of, you know, is Azure Artos controlling the motors? Yes. So uh, from the from the hardware architecture side of things, uh, there are uh, there's the A7 core, uh, which is running the software that is is connecting to uh, Azure IoT Central, and then there's the M4 core, and all of the hardware interaction, apart from the OLED display, is happening on the M4. So okay. Azure Artos uh, has all the code in it. Uh, that is uh, reading the IMU, uh, the accelerometer gyro magnetometer. Um, it's doing sensor fusion on that data to look at the, the kind of lean angle of the robot. Um, and then it's using something called a, a Mahoney filter um, and a PID controller to determine uh, how fast the motors need to turn to keep the robot balanced. So all of that is happening um, under the control of Azure Artos running on the M4. And that is is running uh, inside a control loop that is on a five millisecond tick. That makes sense. Is anything being sent up to the cloud? I'm just, I'm curious because all of this looks like it's happening on the device, but is there any like telemetry or anything being sent up to the cloud? Yes, yes, there is. So there is uh, an intercore bridge between the M4 and the A7. So as we're uh, running the Azure Artos code, the real-time code, uh, we're we're reading various things about the uh, about the robot. So first of all, we're reading the amount of battery that that remains. Uh, you know, poten potentially we could warn the user that we're running low on power. Right. Um, the second thing that we're doing is obviously reading uh, the accelerometer, gyro, magnetometer, figuring out. Uh, information about the robot, the direction it's facing and how much it's leaning, how much power we need to put on the motors, all these kind of things. Uh, so that kind of information is being sent from the M4 to the A7. And then the A7 is then connected to Azure IoT Central so that we can push up that telemetry from our robot up to Azure. And then we can view in graphs and other kind of data formats the current state of that robot. OK, that makes sense. Now I'm curious, uh, if you are running this robot, and I know we talked earlier about over-the-air updates, uh, what if you did an over-the-air update while the robot was you know, uh, uh, you know, know, balancing or self-balancing? What would happen? Is it going to fall? What, what do, <laughs> would you give a little bit of information there? OK, so that's a great question. As a software developer, I write code that runs on the A7 that is uh, connected to the internet. And one of the things I can do in that application is get a notification that an update to my device is pending. And then I, as the application developer, get to make a decision about whether I'm going to take that update or not. So in our case, for the robot, the M4 is reading all the sensors on the device. It can figure out how much the device is leaning, therefore, whether it's standing up or laying down. So in our case, when the A7 application gets that notification that there's an update pending, we look at the telemetry data that's coming from the M4, determine whether the robot is standing or laying. If it's standing, we change the icon on the OLED display to show there's an update pending and then defer the update for one minute. One minute later, obviously, we'll get the, uh, the notification again that uh, an update is pending. And again, we can check, is the robot standing up or is it laying down? If it's laying down, then we can say, OK, we're in a good spot. We can take that update and, and then kind of continue from there. Uh, the way that we've got this implemented for, for this demo, uh, you know, for the robot, is there are four icons displayed on the front panel of the robot, the first of which is the amount of power remaining. The second is its Wi-Fi connectivity. The third is its connection to Azure IoT Central. And the fourth is simply the letter A or B. So we can deploy an application update over the air to the robot. Uh, and initially, it will show A on the front panel. And when it gets the update and it's applied and the application restarts, it will change it to show B, because it's you know the second version of the application, right? Yeah. Um, Could so, we see that? 
Could we actually uh, see the robot right now and see uh, all of the, the screen that you were just talking about? Sure, yes. Uh, let me move my camera so that you can see the robot. Uh, let me just grab that. Okay, let me know if you can see the robot. Yes, we can. Okay, so I've got a USB cable plugged in the side. That's not actually needed to run the robot. Um, I've got that connected because uh, earlier I was connected to Visual Studio. I could use Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code to mm. write my code, deploy it, test it, debug it. Um, so, so here's the display on the front that shows at the top, power, Wi-Fi, IoT Central, and then the letter A. Just okay. above that is the time of flight sensor hole. And then I can you know, lift this up and, and you can see it you know, doing, doing its thing, right? Kind of balancing on my desk, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, so there it is. So, so you have um, the IoT Central icon. What what is that actually doing? Uh, so, is it you're connecting through IoT Central for this for this demo? Uh, yes. Yeah, so um, uh, the the way that the app application running on the A7 is working, when the application starts up, it looks to see if it has a network connection, in this case, a Wi-Fi connection, yeah. and if it has, it will then make a connection to Azure IoT Central. Okay. And when it has that connection to Azure IoT Central, then the robot can start sending telemetry, you know, from the A7 application up to Azure IoT Central. Great. I can imagine it's a nice way to visualize the data coming in and just having a nice dashboard. Yes. Okay. It also gives you the ability to send commands the other way as well. So from Azure IoT Central, you could not only visualize what's happening with the robot in terms of amount of battery that's remaining and um, information about the uh, accelerometer, gyro, magnetometer, all, all that kind of information. Yep. But you could also imagine that you could send some interesting commands the other direction, you know, face north, <laughs> for example. Yeah. That's great. Is uh, anything else you want to cover with the demo? I'm, I'm a big fan. Um, I'm waiting for mine to come into the mail. So whenever you want to ship me one of these guys, I <laughs> just give me one of the dev boards and I can build it myself. Sure. Okay. Yeah. It, it's in the post. <laughs> <laughs> It'll take a long time to get here. <laughs> right. Well, thank you so much, Mike. I, I'm curious on how can people get uh, started and learn more about Azure Artos with Azure Sphere? Where would you recommend for them to go? Yes, so uh, I think one of the best places to go would be to the uh, Azure Sphere website mm -hmm. um, and then kind of get information from there. Order a dev board. I think I showed you one of them earlier. This is um, you know, one of the, the larger dev boards. There are, there are many different boards that exist out there, many dev kits, Avnet, and so on. Um, uh, obviously, get Azure Artos, uh, get Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, and then start writing, deploying, testing your applications. Yes, and for Azure Artos, uh, since we made the announcement at Build, we also have um, all of the components on GitHub, so folks can start playing with Azure Artos now. So. Well, thank exactly. you so much, Mike. Um, and I want to thank everyone for, for tuning in. And we're excited for, uh, for you to get started with Azure Artos and Azure Sphere. Thank you.